We're going to look at intermolecular forces next in this last section of chapter 11. And we're primarily going to be interested in intermolecular forces in the context of liquids, because oftentimes it's easy to think about these things in that context. And we'll explain it use to explain liquid properties. But, but let's, let's look at some of these um, intermolecular forces that we're going to be talking about. The first broad class of, of intermolecular forces are called um, Van der Waals forces. And there are really um, uh, two types of Van der Waals forces. The first is something called a dipole. A dipole-dipole interaction. And this is quite simply, this is, we'll draw a picture in a moment, but it's an attractive force. All of these intermolecular forces are going to be attractive forces, but um, it's an attractive force resulting from polar molecules aligning themselves. So what we could think about it is, is this, is we have, say, for example, a polar molecule in uh, HCl. One end of the HCl molecule is sort of slightly more positively charged than the other, right? meaning the, the hydrogen side is a bit more positive. In other words, there's more electron density around the chlorine <clears throat> because of the chlorine's higher electronegativity. This is the case for each of these molecules, each of the HCl molecules. Well, we know that Coulombic attraction is going to make it so that there's a slight attraction between this end of this molecule and the negative end of this molecule. That attraction is a small force. It's called a dipole-dipole force. It's because we have a dipole that exists within a molecule, a polar molecule, right? And the dipole of another polar molecule is going to interact with that such that the net positive of one side is going to interact with the negative of the other side, and there'll be a slight attraction between those. Another type of, so that's, that's one type of a broader category called Van der Waals forces. Another type of forces are called um, London forces. Sometimes they're called dispersion forces. Sometimes I've even heard them called London dispersion forces. So it sort of just depends on what the text is. But here, the, 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 the key words here, so here we have, um, up here with dipole-dipole forces, we had polar molecules. With London forces, what we have are, 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 we could have this in, say, nonpolar molecules. And it's uh, nonpolar molecules can create or have what's called, would be called an instantaneous dipole. And you can get attractive forces between particles because 
of those instantaneous dipoles. Here's, there, here's, here's an example of that. Let's say, and let's just, let's take, let's say we have got a molecule, and I'll make it a sort of a blob here, meaning this is what we're thinking about is the electron density of a certain molecule that's nonpolar. And the electron density of this molecule, or let's put one right there next to it in that direction. Okay, so we have these two molecules. These two nonpolar molecules. So we're not, we don't really have a lot of dipole dipole or, or forces going on, meaning we have one end that's positive or negative. We have something that's, that's relatively nonpolar. But the, the, key, the key word for London forces to remember is instantaneous dipole. That's sort of a key keyword uh, for, for that. And the way it would work is this in a given split second, perhaps there happens to be a bit more electron density within this side of the molecule and a bit less, therefore, because of the, on that side of the molecule. But then it disappears almost instantly. So now it's a nonpolar molecule again. But then in another quick instant, we might have something where we have a bit more electron density just because remember electrons are we have a, you know we have a probability area about where they're going to be they could in they could probability says bunch up a little bit in one area of a molecule or in one side of an atom for example just instantaneously but then it goes away immediately well what if this happens and this molecule happens to be close to this one well coulombic repulsion is going to make it, or attraction is going to make it so that you end up getting what it would be called an instantaneous dipole acting between two different molecules. And therefore there'd be a slight attraction. Now in the next instant this goes, you know, the, 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 the dipoles go away, but you could create another one. And these London forces are very small because of that, as you could imagine. So we have varying, varying positions of electrons um, that move as they move about the nucleus. Now, these van der Waals forces, let's think about the energies involved in these. Approximate energies are on the order of 0.1 to 10 kilojoules per mole. If you recall, a chemical bond when we're looking at delta H's of chemical bonds, chemical bonds have an energy on the order of 100 to 1,000 kilojoules per mole. So these are really a, a hundred times weaker than a chemical bond, right? About a hundred times weaker than a typical chemical bond. Let's look at The next type of intermolecular force we'll look at, so, so, so far we looked at van der Waals forces and two different sorts of van der Waals forces. Let's look at another sort, something called hydrogen bonding. Now recall, just to remember, we're talking about intermolecular forces, forces that are between molecules. Where we have hydrogen, a hydrogen bond is this. When we have, um, it's, it's, let's, we'll, we'll write out a definition and then we'll, we'll look at it in more detail. But it's a, 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 a weak uh, um, interaction. between, and it, it's an attractive interaction, between a hydrogen atom covalently bonded 
to a very electronegative easy thing to remember is NOF nitrogen oxygen fluorine to a very electronegative atom and a lone pair of electrons on a small electronegative atom. Again, NOF are good ones to remember. Nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine. When so, so let's look at a few examples of this. With hydrogen fluoride, looking at our periodic table, if you recall, the electronegativity goes up as you go up the periodic table, and as you go over, it goes over. So some of the most electronegative uh, atoms in the periodic table are nitrogen, oxygen, and fluorine. Because of the high electronegativity of, say, for example, fluorine in this case, the amount of electron density around the fluorine is very high compared to, say, for example, the HCl we looked at with dipole-dipole forces. And the positive charge on this end of the molecule is also extreme. And so what we have is hydrogen bonding. So what we have here is a, a hydrogen atom covalently bonded to a very electronegative atom. Right? And it's going to interact with the lone pair of electrons that are here in this fluorine, for example. It's a relatively weak to moderate attractive interaction. It's a very weak, so, and, and, and just to give you the numbers, just so you can see what the numbers are for hydrogen bonding, comparing them, 10 to 40 kilojoules per mole. So with van der Waals forces, we had on the order of 0.1 to 10, if you recall. So a good number to remember for van der Waals is around one kilojoule per mole. With hydrogen bonding, we're 10 times greater amount of interaction or, or attractive force. Another picture we could draw, and a chemical bond, as you recall, just to rem remind you, 100 to 1,000 kilojoules per mole. So van der, an easy thing to remember, van der Waals forces about one kilojoule per mole. Hydrogen bonding, 10 kilojoules per mole. Um, and, and chemical bond on the order of hundreds of kilojoules per mole. So you can see that, that there's, that there's a, a, a very strong interaction between these hydrogen atoms that are bonded to a very electronegative atom. So for example, water displays a lot of hydrogen bonding characteristics between the molecules, a lot of interaction. This hydrogen, which is covalently bonded to an oxygen, and the lone pair of electrons on the oxygen, small electronegative atom, have an attraction that's on the order of 10 kilojoules per mole. And this would, of course, happen within the entire network of liquid water molecules, for example. But let's look at um, a couple of examples of this phenomenon that are exhibited by boiling points of various molecules, various compounds. Typically, boiling point of a compound will go up with increasing 
mass. It takes more kinetic energy to get that molecule into the gas phase. What we see with water, and as we go, what we're doing here, we're looking at compounds where hydrogen is bonded to oxygen, sulfur, selenium, and tellurium. H2O, S2O, SE, H2SE, H2TE, and so on. So we're going right down this row of the periodic table. The boiling point, if we ignore water for a moment, of these materials goes up with molecular weight like we might expect. It takes more kinetic energy to get those things into the uh, vapor phase. So it takes, so, so because they're heavier, they're bigger, and so on. What's the, what's the deal with this big jump? The boiling point of water is 160 degrees larger than H2S. And the reason is for that is because water has, is essentially hydrogen, it's hydrogen bonding to itself. Water molecules are, are high, there's a phenomenon of hydrogen bonding where the water molecules are, are, are attracted to themselves to such a great degree that it takes even a lot more energy to get the water from the liquid phase to the gas phase. And we see that in other molecules also. Let's look at when we're bonding four hydrogens to carbon, salt, silicon, germanium, and tin. When we look at the boiling point of these compounds, they, it goes up with increasing boiling point, as we might expect. And this is the case for, um, as we're going, looking at here and here also. But the difference is that nitrogen, or sorry, uh, ammonia, and hydrogen fluoride can hydrogen bond among themselves. And so it takes a lot more energy to make those into the gas phase. So this is the boiling point. And, and so, so we see this phenomenon or where we can see have, um, uh, proof of the fact that, that, that um, hydrogen bonding, which are just intermolecular forces, exist.